Okay, so we are trying to draw um, three-dimensional frames, but we're doing it in two dimensions, which means it makes it a little bit tricky. So, for example, in this um, picture, it's completely clear that Z is pointing up and that Y is pointing to the right, right? But what about X? I mean, it may look to you like X is pointing out of the page or X is pointing into the page, but I'm going to argue that actually it could be either one, depending on how you look at it. So let's start looking at these two views of the same cube and just understand with me that we've got kind of a cube that, that has an opening in the front, right? So there's the opening in the front. It's kind of, um, there's no cover. There's no, no, um, no side on one side of the cube, right? So the back of the cube is black and the two vertical sides are pink and we've got yellow on sort of the roof of the cube and these purple dot things on the bottom. Right? So look at these two pictures, make sure that you agree that they are two views of the same cube before you um, go on. If you don't see that, then just pause for a minute. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlay this XYZ coordinate frame that we had before on each of these cubes that you looked at. And again, just look at the cubes and recognize one's viewed from below, one is viewed from above. Okay, so here you can see I've taken this coordinate frame and I've overlaid it onto this box so that the XY axis is along sort of the bottom of the box and Z is, I guess, along sort of the left side of the box. So if we're looking at this viewed from below and we line that XYZ um, axis the way I've done it, um, then um, do you agree that X points away from you? So just take a look again at this, at this, and you know, this is the bottom of my box. So yeah, X is pointing away from me when Y and Z are pointing up like that, or pointing to the right and up. And of course, you've already guessed what's going to happen, right? So I have taken, notice that these two, these two coordinate frames, right, are just exactly the same as that, but I've overlaid the second one in a different, in a different place on this cube that's viewed from above. So I have Y pointing to the right, as we did before, and Z pointing up kind of, they're now along the back um, plane of this cube, right? But now, which way does X appear to be pointing? Well, I think if you look at it, X is pointing towards you now, right? I hope you agree with me. Just take a look at these two for a second and, and notice that the two X axes in this picture, right? They are completely parallel. Similarly, the two Y axes are parallel and the two Z axes are parallel. I haven't done anything magical. Um, and yet in this first picture, it looks like X is pointing away from you. And in the second picture, it sure looks to, to me like X is pointing towards me. So we're just going to adopt the convention that X is pointing out of the picture towards us um, uh, and that we are going to be using a right-handed coordinate frame. So just to clarify a little bit with how I'm drawing these things, um, if that's my x-axis, let's say, that is pointing upwards, up and to the right, let's make that my y-axis, um, means that we are going into the page. So if we look at an axis and we're drawing it up and to the right, that's into the page. Okay, that's going pointing away from us into the page, into the screen of your computer. Just kind of imagine that you are looking at, I assume you're looking at this on a screen that's more or less vertical. So X is the vertical axis, Y is pointing into the page. And similarly, oopsie, sorry, um, now you know my trick. Um, if we've got X pointing up again vertically, right? You're looking at this head on. Um, and the Y axis is kind of down and to the left. That means Y is pointing out of the screen towards you, right? So down and left is towards you. In other words, out of the screen. So let's explain how do you know whether a coordinate system is right-handed or not? Well, we can figure it out using the right-hand rule. 
um, and given any two axes, you can figure out the direction of the third axis using physically your right hand. Um, and so the idea is if you start with your right hand, right, it's really important to use your right hand. If you are left-handed, you're going to have to sit on your left hand whenever you do this. Um, let's start with just X and Y. Let's suppose we know the X and Y axis. Then you're going to point the fingers of your right hand towards X, curl your fingers towards Y, and your thumb will point in the Z direction. So let me show you what I mean. So here we've got X and Y. And step one in this process was to point your fingers along the x-axis. So what I want you to do is take the fingers of your right hand, right? And I want you to kind of, facing the screen, hold your right hand so that your fingers are pointing in front of your body to the left, the way the x-axis is in this picture. And then now that you've done that, you're going to curl your fingers towards you, right? Because your fingers are facing to the left, your palm is facing towards you, and the y-axis is pointing out of the picture, right? Because that was what we agreed in terms of the, the way, if we see an arrow diagonally kind of down into the left, what it's going to mean. So um, we're going to curl our fingers from pointing to the left so that they curl towards pointing at you, and the end result is that your thumb is pointing in the direction where Z should be. And there you go. So we can draw in the Z axis. So we know that if you know the X and Y axes, right, you should start at X, curl towards Y, and your thumb will point in towards Z. And this chart just tells you everything else. If you start with the Y and Z axes, if you know them, then start with Y, right, hands pointing in the direction of Y, your fingers. Um, curl towards Z, and that will tell you the positive direction for the x-axis. If you know the x and z axis, you need to start at Z. So just remember, you go from x to y to get to Z, you go from y to Z to get to x, and you go from Z to x to get to y. So it sort of goes around in a circle. And this is, you start at the positive x-axis, you curl into the positive y-axis, your thumb points in the positive z-axis. Similarly, you start at the positive z-axis, you curl to the positive x-axis and your thumb will point in the direction of the positive y-axis and that's just how we get a right-handed coordinate frame. So let's practice on these um, on these uh, pictures. I'm going to start um, with this guy. So x is pointing out of the screen towards me. So I'm going to have to have my fingers pointing towards me. But notice that I have to curl towards Y. So I'm taking my right hand and my thumb is going to be pointing downwards as my fingers um, uh, face me, point towards me, so that I can curl into Y. And I'll curl into Y and that gives me Z, positive Z axis pointing down. If we look at this next one here, we've got X is pointing up, Y is pointing to the right. So I'm going to hold my fingers up um, so that my fingers are pointing upwards. I'm going to have to have my thumb pointing in towards the screen so I can curl down towards Y, and that means that um, Z is pointing into the screen. Now notice I said I have to have my thumb pointing towards the screen, not because I already know where Z is, but because I can't physically take my right hand and curl my fingers towards Y unless I turn my hand so fingers are up and my palm is facing to the right. All right. If we do this next one, we've got Y and Z axes. So I start with my fingers pointing along Y, right? There's an infinite number of orientations I could have, but it turns out that the only way I can curl my fingers on the right hand so that they go from Y to Z is if my palm is facing up. So if my palm is facing up and I go from Y into Z, then my thumb is facing out of the screen. So positive X is that way. Um, this next one is a little bit tricky. Remember, we've got X and Z, so we need to go from Z towards X. In order to curl from Z to X, I have to point my fingers horizontally to the right with my palm down so that I curl down into X. And that means my thumb is pointing into the screen, so Y goes up and to the right because up and to the right means into the screen. And finally on this one, I've got Y up and to the right, so that's into the screen. Z is to the right here, so just start with my fingers pointing towards the screen. 
I need to figure out an orientation so that I can curl towards um, parallel to my screen, which means that I've got it so my fingers are pointing into the screen, my palm is facing to my right so that when I curl, my fingers curl towards Z, which means that my thumb is pointing down, so positive X is going to be down. But in fact, you already knew that, right? Because that's the same, um, these two graphs actually have the same orientation of their, uh, of their axes. Okay, now sometimes we want to rotate an entire coordinate frame um, about a particular axis. So here we have this uh, coordinate frame where Z points up, X is pointing to the left, and Y is pointing out of the piece of paper or out of the screen towards us. And the question is, if I say rotate about the Z axis by um, 90 degrees, by positive 90 degrees, what I mean is, is sort of pick up the axis, you know, grab onto the top of the Z axis and spin it by 90 degrees. But we need to figure out which way um, we want to rotate it. Because, of course, it's just by convention what a spin of positive 90 degrees might be, right? The first is spinning by 90 degrees might be picking it up. And if we spin by 90 degrees that away, then we end up with um, Y was originally pointing straight out of the screen, but now it's pointing to the left after we've done the rotation, right? And X used to be pointing to the left, but now X is pointing into the screen, right? And Z, of course, because we picked it up by the top, nothing's happened to Z. So Z is still um, unrotated. Z still points up. But you knew this was coming, right? We could also say, oh, you know what? A rotation is a rotation kind of in that direction about Z, right? We grab it here, in which case, if Y was originally facing forward, Y is now rotating that way. And so Y ends up pointing to the right while X is now pointing out of the screen. Now there's nothing wrong with either of these. Both of them are equally good ways to rotate, but we need a convention that says when I say to rotate about an axis by a positive amount or by a negative amount, which direction do I rotate? And the answer is we're going to use another right hand rule. So again, if you're left handed, you need to sit on your left hand or something while you do this. But the idea is all you do is you point your right thumb in the direction of the axis that you want to rotate about and then your fingers curl in the direction that indicates positive rotation. So for example, in this picture here, the thumb is pointing upwards, right? And you can see that if it's the thumb of the right hand, the fingers are curling in that direction, which means that a rotation of Z, positive rotation of Z, is a rotation in that direction. And so if we rotate it by 90 degrees, we end up with that frame. So let's try a couple more examples. Let's suppose that we have that same um, uh, coordinate frame again. So we've got Z pointing up, we have X to the left, and we have Y. I'm drawing it down into the left, which means it's pointing out of the um, piece of paper um, or out of the screen towards us. And let's suppose that we want to do a rotation about X by, let's do 90 degrees. Right? So the first thing you need to do is you need to hold your hand in front of this picture and say, well, which way is X pointing? X is pointing to the left, so you need to take your right thumb and point it to the left. And when I point my right thumb to the left, I can see that my fingers are kind of curling around this way. So that means that a rotation of X by 90 degrees would be um, a rotation where I hold this, it's like I grab that end and then rotate around the X axis. So the Z axis is going to, after we rotate, this point stays fixed, right? This whole axis stays fixed. And after we rotate, Z is now going to be pointing back out of the screen, right? So there's our new Z. And our new Y, well, Y right now is pointing out of the screen, but after we rotate X by 90 degrees, the new Y is going to be pointing up, and the new X still is pointing in the same direction as the old X, right? Let's just do a couple more. So we've got Z up, 
x is to the left and y is pointing out of the page towards us. Um, suppose we do a rotate about y by negative 90 degrees. And of course, I'm just doing 90 degrees because it's much easier to draw these than anything else. Um, but if I rotate about y by negative 90 degrees, well, we got to figure out what's the positive direction of rotation for y. So if I stick my thumb so that it's sort of pointing towards me, I can see that um, that's the direction of positive rotation. But I want to do a negative rotation, so I'm going to go the other way. So after I have rotated, after I've rotated this axis, let's do it in green. After I've rotated, um, of course, y, the y-axis is going to remain the same, right? Because we're rotating about the y, so it's like we're grabbing the end of that and spinning it. And we are spinning in the opposite direction from, um, from this little, uh, from this rotation here, right? We're going to go in the opposite direction to that. Um, and so we've got y pointing out of the page towards us, but z now is going to be rotating down that away. So the new z, oops, the new z axis will be pointing that way. And again, the new x axis is kind of rotating around this way too. And so what used to be where the z axis was is now where the x axis was. And of course, if we have, what did we have? We had z pointing up. Let's just do something interesting and different. Let's have y to the right and use the right hand rule. If we go from y to z, that means x is going to be pointing out towards us. And let's rotate about x by 180 degrees, right? 180 is the same as negative 180. Um, but if we, um, uh, actually, let's rotate about y, because um, I don't think we've done that one yet. Let's do a rotation about this y-axis, which is pointing to the right, by um, 180 degrees. Um, so if you stick your thumb so it's pointing to the right, your fingers kind of wrap around that way. So a rotation of y, about y by 180 degrees, well, actually, that's the same as a negative rotation, but um, because 180 degrees is halfway, right? But we end up with z rotating this way through 180 degrees and ending up down here and x rotating kind of down and around and ending over here. So notice x is pointing into the screen now. And y, of course, because when we did our rotation, we just grabbed the y-axis and sort of spun it. Um, y is, uh, is rotating right here, stays put. OK, so I have to see an awful lot of drawings that are in 3D drawn by people who haven't done a lot of drawings in 3D. And so I just want to give you a little bit of a, um, an idea of how I recommend for my class, how I require you to draw um, to plot points in 3D. Um, and so the first example, let's just start and let's look at how I would say you plot 5, 3, 4 on this particular axis, and I've arbitrarily decided that x goes there, that's the y-axis, that's the z-axis, and if you look, um, if you try with your right hand, it is in fact a right-handed uh, um, coordinate frame. But so the first thing that I want you to do when you are um, plotting anything is to draw tick marks, and you can see I've already drawn these tick marks on the line. And notice, by the way, when you draw the tick marks, that you need to pay attention how you draw them. And so uh, what you want to think about is, is, is sort of just keep remembering that, that um, you've got sort of a ground plane here, right? That's the ground. And so your vertical axis, your tick marks are just going to be horizontal. But on your um, axis that's pointing out and to the right, you want those tick marks to be parallel to your axis that's coming out or going into the screen. And similarly, your axis that is coming out of the screen or going into the screen is going to have tick marks that are parallel to um, to the uh, axis that's going left right. So if I just show you these again, we've got our up and down axis has the has the horizontal um, lines, which are in fact parallel to this axis, um, and we have the axis that's going out to the right um, has its tick marks are parallel to this other axis, and the axis that's coming out of the screen, its tick marks are parallel to the one that goes over and to the right. 
Um, the way I'm going to teach you to draw requires that you're drawing something that is more or less, well, has a ground plane, right? Is, so is, is laid out neatly um, like this, but uh, most of the things we're going to be hand drawing are going to look like that. Now once you've drawn your tick marks, we want to kind of give this a 3D effect by drawing two lines on the ground plane. And in this case, the ground is formed by the XY um, plane. And so we're going to look and X is 5 and Y is 3. So we're going to start on the X axis and we will um, count, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, so 5 is about there. So we'll draw an extra tick mark and we'll write 5, and y is 3, so we'll count 1, 2, 3, and we'll draw that tick mark in carefully, and we'll do 3, and then because our tick marks are drawn as they are, we can connect those guys together. And there it is drawn a little bit more nicely. And then the final step is to draw whatever the last axis is. In this case, it's um, the z-axis or the z-coordinate. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to where these two guys meet and we're going to throw up sort of a perpendicular and we're going to do one, two, three, four tick marks on that and kind of color in that spot. That's where our point is and that is four up. And here's a, a neater version of that, right? So the final step is you draw your perpendicular with tick marks and make sure that you draw your point on there. And that actually looks pretty good, right? Um, and so let's try and do another example. Let's try and do the same thing, but with an axis system where X is pointing to the right. See, I said it here and Z is pointing down, and if X is going to the right and Z is down, well, we have to go to, from Z to X to get to Y, remember that? So, there's our Y, and, um, and I'm just checking right now with my hand to make sure I did it right. I'm going from X to Y and I got Z, so everything looks good. And what we wanna do is we wanna plot five, three, four again. So first we're gonna draw our tick marks, and again, the up-down line is getting just our sort of horizontal tick marks. Now, I really hope that when you draw this on a piece of paper, you do it more neatly than I'm drawing it when I'm trying to draw it with a um, low-quality uh, stylus on a, um, on a screen. So, yes, mine are a little bit messy. Make yours neater, please. And then when we're looking at the x, y axes, we're going to make the tick marks on the x axis parallel to those of the y axis because these two are again forming the ground plane. So there we go. And now I want to plot 5, 3, 4. So x is 5. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And y is 3. Again, for some reason, my ground plane is still xy. Hopefully the next example won't be, but 1, 2, 3. So there's y. And we're going to try and kind of draw the ground plane here. So there's my ground plane, and that's the point 5, and that's 3. And then we're going to go down by 4 along the z-axis. So we're going to drop that perpendicular, and we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4 draw my nice point and there's the point and let's try one more example that says y is going right here's my example so we're going to make y go to the right z is going into the page so there's my z so hurrah y and z are forming us the way i draw my z's and um, so Y, Z are gonna, is going to form our ground plane, and to figure out which direction the X goes, I use my right hand rule. I point my hand to the right and then towards the back, and my thumb is pointing up. So there's my X axis, and I just check it real quick by going from X to Y, and I see Z, so it looks good. And again, I want to do 5, 3, 4, but the important thing here now is that the ground plane is my Y, Z axis, right? So I need to look at the 3 and the 4. And so I'm going to go, oh, let's draw our tick marks, I'm sorry. So 
the vertical axis will get the horizontal tick marks, and the ground plane will get the tick marks parallel to the other things in the ground plane. And again, I cannot draw neatly on this pad, but I'm sure you can draw more neatly if you have a ruler and everything else. And then we're plotting 3 is Y and 4 is Z. So we're going 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, it's not going to work. It's not going to fit. Hang on. I'm going to try and drag this over. There we go. So Y is 3 and Z is 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops. And so we're going to try and kind of draw it like that. And we have Y is 3 and Z is 4. And now we do X, which is 5. So we're going to do our perpendicular again. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there's my point. And we can even label the point. That's the point. Oops, 5, 3. So just one more example, plot 1, 3, 5 on a coordinate frame where x points up, y points into the paper, and then another one where y points down and z points out of the paper. Okay, so if x points up and y points into the paper, then that's x is pointing up, y is pointing into the paper. I go from x to y, I get z is pointing to the left. And we want to plot 1, 3, 5. Well, let's do the tick marks. We'll do them in a different color. My up and down axis gets horizontal tick marks, and my other two axes get tick marks that are sort of parallel to the other axis on the ground plane. And again, I need to move this over a little bit. Let's see if I can do that. Magic. Um, and we want to plot 1, 3, 5. We first start by doing Y and Z because they form our ground plane. So let's see. So we want to do 3 along the Y axis, which would be here. It's 3. And we want to do 5 along the Z axis. We need a couple more tick marks there. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to go there. And we will sort of draw our ground plane in. And then x is going up, and it's just going up by one point. So we could maybe draw a tick mark in there, put a circle on there. Oops, why didn't it draw my circle? There we go. Um, and we'll label that point 1, 3, 5. Okay. And we can do the same exercise on a coordinate frame where y points down and z points out of the paper. Um, so out of the paper means towards us. So let's see. Um, y is pointing down. And Z is pointing out of the paper towards us. So there's Z. And let's see. X is, let's see, we go from Y to Z. We get X, which is to the left. And let's draw some tick marks. You do not have to use a different color for tick marks, but I think it's easier on this screen. And let's see. Notice I always tend to draw the tick marks on my vertical up-down bar first, because um, then I know the other ones just sort of mirror each other. OK, so the x, z um, axes are forming the uh, the ground plane now. So we want to plot 1, 3, 5. So x is 1. So let's try and plot that in. What color haven't I used yet? Green. So OK, so there's my x is 1. And we're doing the ground plane. So now we do z, which is 5. So z is 1, 2, 3, 4. There's 5 is my z. And we'll kind of draw like that. And then y is 3, but y is pointing downwards. Positive y is downwards, so we need to go downwards like that. Let's use red tick marks, and we go 1, 2, 3. So that's 3 down, which is the point 1, 3, 5. 
Now, sometimes we want, might be talking about multiple coordinate frames. So, for example, we may say that um, we have uh, an airplane and a control tower, and tower coordinates have um, x going off to the right, and you can see I subscripted it with a t for the tower coordinates. Y is going into the screen, and Z is going up. Whereas when we talk about the airplane coordinates, airplane coordinates have Z pointing straight out of the nose of the plane. Um, y is pointing, I'm sorry, this is X. X is pointing um, straight up relative to the plane, of course, right? And Y is, in this case, if the plane is perfectly perpendicular to us, Y is pointing into the page also. Um, and again, I've used these little subscripts to talk about plane coordinates. Of course, what if we think about this, tower coordinates are pretty much fixed, but the plane's coordinates are sort of, you want to imagine it's attached to the nose of the plane, so that if the plane takes off, then suddenly the x coordinate frame is, not going to, is no longer going to be straight up, it's going to be sort of tilted back and so on. So you might have a few questions, like what's the location of the nose of the plane in tower coordinates? And here I've suggested that, well, maybe our, the nose of the plane, right, which is the origin of the plane coordinates, is 50 miles horizontally, which is in, um, which is sort of along the uh, x-axis for the tower, but along, along the z-axis for the plane away from each other. And, um, and also, there's a five meter offset into the page, so the, the um, or into the screen. So, so the tower is five meters in front of the plane with respect to, um, you know, we can imagine the plane is five meters behind the screen and the tower, the origin of the tower is right at the screen. So what can we say about the location of the nose of the plane in tower coordinates, right? So uh, this highlighting effect isn't so great, is it? But this is the one I wanna do, right? I'm not crossing it out, I'm actually just highlighting it. What is the location of the nose of the plane in tower coordinates? Well, let's see. In tower coordinates, we want to give an x, y, and z. Oops, let's just do a regular pen, please. There we go. So if this is the origin of my tower, then the x distance from here to the nose of the plane is 50 meters. The y-axis for the tower, let's just scooch this over a wee bit. The y-axis for the tower is pointing into the page, so that's this five meter distance. And the z-axis, well, it looks like according to this drawing that the, um, that the nose of the plane and the um, base of the tower are at exactly the same location. So the location of the nose of the plane in tower coordinates would be 50, 5, 0, right? Now let's talk about what's the location of the origin of the tower in plane coordinates. So now we're looking in terms of this x, this y, and this z. So let's see, what do we get? Um, the x direction of plane coordinates is up and down, and there is no difference in the up and down, so we'll make that a zero. The y direction of the plane is in and out of the paper, but the tower is negative five meters um, along the plane's y-axis, because you have to go backwards, sort of more towards us if we're looking at a screen. And the z-axis, well, is positive 50 because from the origin of the plane's nose to the origin of the tower, you're going um, 50 meters along the plane's z-axis, right, in the positive z direction. Okay. And finally, what's the location of the nose of the plane in plane coordinates? Well, that's a trick question, right? Well, let's see, the nose of the plane is right here, the origin of plane coordinates is right here, so I guess that's just zero, zero, zero. Now, of course, things get interesting when the plane starts to take off, right? Because tower coordinates hasn't changed. So for tower coordinates, we have x sub t was pointing off to the right, and y sub t 
it was sort of pointing into the page, and z sub t is pointing straight up. But if we look at airplane coordinates, well, x in plane coordinates is pointing up relative to the plane, so now it's pointing like that. And y in plane coordinates, well, if we believe that the plane has not rotated at all, kind of twisty-wise, then that's still kind of into the paper. And you can see that my drawing skills lose it very quickly when we're not doing things that are easy 90 degree angles. Um, and z for the plane is sticking straight out the plane's nose. Um, and every time I see pictures like this, I'm constantly taking my right hand and I'm going x to y to z, x to y to z, just to make sure that all of my um, all of my pictures, all of, they're still right-handed coordinate frames. I didn't misdraw something. Anyway, but they appear to be okay. Um, but uh, please check me. Um, But you can see how, I mean, it does get messy when we're not doing things neatly at 90 degree angles. All of a sudden, you know, the axes, it's its really unclear, you know, uh, it's its pretty clear to me that the z-axis here is, is sort of diagonally up along the page. Um, and I guess the x-axis is also um, lying on the page or lying on the, um, on the screen, right? And the y-axis we're trying to indicate is going into the screen, but it gets it gets pretty tricky. And now when we start talking about where is the nose of the plane and tower coordinates, where is the origin of the tower and plane coordinates, those ones get tricky. But of course, our friend, the location of the nose of the plane in plane coordinates, that last one I can write in really easily. That's just zero 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 still. Because the nose of the plane is always going to be at the origin um, in plane coordinates. Now, because the tower is still nice and, and right angled and following my ground plane rules, we can actually draw some nice lines to figure out where's the nose of the plane and tower coordinates. Um, and I hope you agree that, that by drawing sort of these ground plane lines and, the, um, and this vertical line, it really makes it much easier, if my lines weren't actually there, to see what's going on. It's kind of, it does give sort of a 3D effect when you graph these things nicely. So that's my final plea. Please, if you're in my class, graph these things nicely because your grade depends on it. If you are um, not in my class, then uh, graph these things nicely because it's nice to do.